One one thousand, two one thousand, three one thousand, three seconds. That's generally how much time you have between you and disaster. Three seconds to make the proper decision in an emergency. Make the right decision, and you'll stay safe. Make the wrong decision, and well, you risk becoming a really expensive crash test dummy. Of course, if you don't follow the rules of the road and forget to leave that three-second cushion in an emergency, you might not even have that choice. With young drivers, is they have a tendency to think they're invincible. Hey, back off a little bit. Huh? The car in front of you. Don't you think you're falling a little too close? Not really. See that silver thing on the back of their car? That's a bumper, not a force field. Why don't you leave a little more space between you and the car in front of you? Now that's better. You always want to leave about three seconds space cushion between you and the car in front of you. Okay. But this looks like more like 250 feet, so why not just call it that? Why call it a three-second rule? Well, you are correct. We are following about 250 feet. But it's not the distance in feet that matters. It's the distance in reaction time, and that varies on how fast we're going. For example, if you're going 60 miles per hour, which we are, uh, which is five miles over the speed limit, by the way, you are considered to be driving in a moderate risk environment. As your vehicle speed increases, your reaction time decreases. In English, please? The faster your car is going, the harder it is to spot something and do something about it. Okay. For example, let's say you're going 120 miles per hour. Can I? No. If you see something 300 feet ahead of you, you would have less than two seconds to react to it, which means you would probably hit it. You don't have enough time to swerve out of the way. I don't know, man. My reaction time is pretty good. <laughs> Not that good. Now on the other hand, let's say you were going five miles per hour and you saw something 300 feet ahead of you. I'd have time to take a nap and eat a snack before I even reach that problem. Uh, well, I was gonna say you'd have about 40 seconds, but um, I think you got the point. The distance in your space cushion varies on how fast you're going, but the actual time stays the same, three seconds. The three-second rule is one of the keys to good, safe, defensive driving. But how do you count off three seconds in a moving vehicle? The safe way to determine an appropriate following distance is to pick a marker like that one. Now, when the car ahead of you passes that lamppost, start counting. One one thousand, two one thousand, three one thousand. See it? Yeah, same lamppost. Exactly. If you hit three one thousand when you pass the same marker, then you know you have three seconds between you and the vehicle in front of you, which is plenty of time to react in case something happens. Okay. One one thousand, two one thousand, three one thousand. Perfect. Now, the three second rule isn't just about spotting a hazard in the road. It's also to get you prepared in case the driver in front of you does something unexpected. Okay, but like what? Well, you don't know that driver. They could be a real freak. They could be putting on makeup, turning the radio stations, talking on the cell phone, uh, picking their nose. You don't know what that driver is going to do or if they're just gonna suddenly swerve or slam on the brakes. And you need to be prepared just in case. Of course, the three second rule doesn't just apply to highway driving. It applies to city driving, rural driving, and anywhere else you wanna take your car. As a new driver, you have to be able to judge two things, reaction time and distance. As we said before, the faster you go, the less reaction time you have. And that doesn't just mean reacting to things like potholes and other drivers. It also means something as simple as an intersection like this one. See that traffic signal? If you have three seconds before you get to that intersection, you'll have plenty of time to get through it. But any less time, and you've hit the point of no return. At that point, you have to decide whether you can make it through that intersection or whether you have to stop if the light turned red. One 1,000, two 1,000. See, not enough time to come to a complete stop. If that driver had risked it, they could have risked a number of things, like blocking the intersection, hitting cross traffic that's trying to go through, or stopping too suddenly for the cars behind them to react. That's why you have to make your decision before the point of no return. That way you won't be caught by surprise by any hazards or red lights. I know, I know, 
You think it to yourself, that's what the yellow light is for. Floor it, right? But that yellow light doesn't always last the same amount of time. It varies depending on where you are. Sometimes it can be four seconds long. Sometimes it can be two seconds long. Politely put, you'll be totally screwed if you try to plow through that intersection. Make sure you've allowed yourself a three second cushion. And remember those space management techniques. You're gonna need a clear line of sight and direction of travel. Make sure that everything is clear on the other side, your line of sight. And make sure that there's no cross traffic coming. Remember, people have been known to run red lights before. As for the path of travel, you want to figure that out well in advance. Ask yourself, am I going straight? Am I turning left? Am I turning right? Don't try to figure it out at the last minute. Know where you're going before you go there. Practice the space management techniques we learned earlier, combined with the three-second rule, and they'll keep you driving safely.